for this second project, I'm using this tall terracotta pot. I got a set of two of them at the thrift store and I just love the size and the shape of them. They're just very unique. Anyhow, I'm giving it one rough coat again with my chip brush of my white chalk paint. It doesn't matter if a little bit of the terracotta shows through because I want it to be fairly rustic. Now, if you don't have a Lazy Susan or a turntable like this when you're working on round projects, you are missing out. Make sure you hit those thrift stores or check out anywhere you can find a turntable or a Lazy Susan because it makes the work so much easier when you can spin that project around. To give the pot more of an aged look, I'm just using a brush that already has my mushroom colored paint on it and I'm just giving it a dry brush, a little heavier in some areas, a little lighter in other areas. It really doesn't matter. Whatever suits you, whatever you like. I found some really pretty olive sprig designs on pixabay.com and everything that I have found will be available on my website as a free printable so make sure you check that link in my description box as well this again is a water slide decal so i'm soaking it in water and then i'll apply it to the pot i printed off some smaller sprigs of the olives and i'm just going to add a couple of them to the lip of the pot as well For this pot, I decided to make a tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take some of these glass beads that I got from the dollar store a long time ago. They've just been hanging out in my stash. And I'm just gonna put some down at the bottom to give it a little bit of weight. Using my utility knife, I'm just gonna cut the corners off of this block of styrofoam and then wedge it down into the pot. I'm going to be making a tree. So what I took first was just a leftover piece of stem. It is a plastic stem, but it's brown. And I'm taking these little boxwood stems. I've cut the little circle down at the bottom to make it a little bit easier to push them onto the stems. And I'm going to continue filling up all of the stems with this boxwood. Once I had filled up all the little stem pieces, I then took some additional green stems and glued them on just with some hot glue. I wanted to fill it in just a little bit and make it look more full. I pushed the stem into the styrofoam and used a little bit of hot glue to make sure it stayed in place. Now I'm taking some green floral wire and just bending it into a U shape because I want to add some of this moss, but I don't want to glue it down should I ever decide to change my mind about this later on. So I can just take this little bit of wire and push it down into the moss, into the styrofoam, and it will hold it in place really well. Let's get crafting. I'm gonna start off by spray painting this old coffee can that I keep. These are awesome to keep if you need different planters. I'm gonna give it a good coat of flat black Rust-Oleum two times paint and primer in one. Now I've got a stick from my yard. I actually kept this from a tree we cut down last year, so it's really hard and dried out. But I am just gonna trim off this little branch because I don't need it. This is going to be my lemon tree. So I'm taking some acrylic paint and this is just from Apple Barrel. It's just regular yellow, what it's called. And I'm going to add some of the talc that I use to make my DIY chalk paint. I'm gonna just add a whole bunch in. You can see how watery this paint is. It doesn't cover really well, but once you add the talc, I like to set the paint aside so it has a chance to really thicken up. The baby powder or the talc, really absorbs some of the moisture so it gets super thick when you do it this way and that's what I really love about using talc just with acrylic paint. I don't have lemons that are small enough so I'm going to be using these limes. I grabbed these I think a couple of years ago at the thrift store and I think there was about 20 of them in a bag. They're styrofoam but they're coated with something really hard and they've got a beautiful texture just like limes and lemons. So I'm going to give these two coats of this yellow chalk paint. 
With my cordless drill, I'm going to use a drill bit that is the same width as these stems. These are ficus branches, but I'm going to use them for my lemon tree because they're very similar to lemon leaves. What I'm gonna do with the drill is just drill random holes all the way up and down the stick on either side, just kind of staggering the holes because I'm gonna be able to then take those stems and stick them into the holes, making it look really realistic. When I get to applying these, I am going to add some hot glue into it so it stays nice and firm. As I said earlier, using some hot glue, I'll just put a little blob right on top of the hole and then insert the branch. I just continued to add the branches until I got the look I wanted. Now for the lemons. Don't they look amazing? I'm so excited that this color turned out so good. And with the texture of the lemons, it's amazing. I'm just taking some extra stems that I had from different florals and pushing those right into the spot where I had the skewer for when I painted the lemons. And this is going to give me the ability to just poke them right into the stem of the branch as well in a drilled hole the same as the other branches. Before I put them onto the tree, I'm going to add a couple of leaves here and there. Some of the lemons will get two leaves. A couple of them will just get one. And I'm just using hot glue to glue them right to the bottom of the lemon. So now I'm just going to drill in some more holes and add my lemons. Now that the lemon tree itself is all finished, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get that thing to stand up in my can. So I did have this piece of styrofoam and I'm just using my craft knife to cut out a circle that's about the same size as the branch. I'm going to glue that styrofoam down to the bottom of the can and then glue the branch in. To add some weight, I went to my stash and just threw in some rocks and some pebbles, whatever I happen to have laying around. Here you can see I've already started pushing in some of that st green styrofoam and it really worked well to just wedge everything in place. To finish off, I decided to add what moss I have left. This is sort of a mix of reindeer moss and Spanish moss. I'm just going to use some hot glue and then press it into place. I liked the black of the coffee can, but I just thought it was missing a little something. So I just took my dry brush and did some strokes all the way around it. I think that just gave it more of a weathered and rustic look. And that's something that I like. You could definitely leave it black if you prefer it that way. I just like... I found this tiny little vase at the thrift store and I just really loved the rope detail at the top. It's a little schmutzy so I cleaned it up but later on I'm going to give it a fresh coat of paint which will also help. I'm taking a part of a pool noodle and I'm just pushing it down as far as it will go into the pot without it jumping back out and then I'll just take a serrated knife and very carefully cut off the excess pool noodle. I found this brown plastic stem in my stash and I'm going to use that as the base for this little project. I've just got it in the center of the pool noodle because of course they have a hole and I've added some hot glue just to try and hold it in place a little bit. Once this has almost set up, I'm going to add little bits of pool noodle to stuff into the hole and make sure that this is really secure. Next, I took another tiny little piece of pool noodle and just hot glued it to the very top of the stick. And I'm doing that simply because I'm using a tiny little wicker ball as the base for this topiary. And I wanted to be able to have somewhere to glue it on. So I'm just very gently going to be pushing that on. And then I'll add a lot of hot glue at the top and at the bottom of the wicker ball just to keep it steady on the stick. Usually when I do topiaries, I do greenery, but this time I decided to do a lavender topiary ball and I thought this would be so much fun. So I'm taking some of these 
lavender picks that I have and I'm just going to be cutting them in threes and then some of them I'll cut in twos and I'm just going to start gluing it onto the wicker ball. Now because there's some holes I'm leaving some of the stem pieces on because that will give the hot glue something better to grip onto and then I'll be able to just push it right into the wicker ball. Now I know sometimes topiary balls are really nice and round, but I'm going to make this one a little bit more fun and I wanna have some bits and pieces hanging out all over the place. Here's what it looks like. And now I'm going to do the same thing with some of this little greenery. I'm going to trim off some of the pieces, just tiny little stems, and then I'll hot glue them all over the topiary itself just to give it a little bit more color and texture. Before I go any further, I'm going to take some of that same sheepskin chalk paint by Folk Art and I'm going to give this one coat just to freshen it up a little bit. I took one of my printables and printed it off really tiny on some tissue paper and now I'm going to cut it out really nice and close to the edges. Using a small brush I'm going to put a generous amount of Mod Podge where I want the label to be. Then I'm going to use the brush to pick up the label and center it on my project. Then take some more Mod Podge on my brush starting from the center and working my way out, just smoothing it down and making sure that there aren't too many wrinkles or bubbles. Then I'm gonna go over the whole pot with one coat of Mod Podge so it has the same sheen. To finish off my topiary tree, I'm going to use some reindeer moss and just hot glue it right on top of the pool noodle. And you'll have to excuse the brightness of the sun coming through, but I just couldn't resist. We've had so many cold weather days up here in Ontario, Canada, and I needed to see the sunshine and it just felt so good. I added a few little bits of the lavender and some greenery at the bottom of the topiary on top of the reindeer moss and this project turned out super cute. I picked up this by number five is using this little thrifted urn that I picked up at the thrift store. It's just resin and it did have a few cracks in it that I just used some hot glue on the inside to hold them in place. But I'm going to be applying a little bit more of this antiquing wax, which is the bare brown wax, and that will camouflage some of the cracks as well. I'm using a chip brush to make sure I get into all of the nooks and crannies, and then I'm going to use a baby wipe to just kind of dab on top, get some of that wax off of the raised edges and make it stay in the nooks and crannies, and then it just looks really old and vintage. I haven't made a topiary in a while, so I decided to use this stick that I got from my mom. Her plant had died, so I told her we'll keep the stick because it'll be great for a topiary. I'm just using a little screwdriver to poke some holes into the styrofoam, and then I'm just going to push the stem into it and then use some hot glue to secure it in place. I'm using up a lot of the greenery that I already have. I've had these vine pieces for a couple of years in my stash and I thought, you know what, I've got too many boxes of greenery floating around. So I wanted to use up what I have and these were perfect. Some of them stood straight up like this first one, but some of them hang really nicely. So I decided to make this sort of a weeping willow kind of topiary. And so what I do is I trim the branches, I figure out how I want it to sit, and then I use hot glue to put it in place. Once it was all built, I 
looked at it and I decided that I still really didn't like how the bottom was looking. There was still a little bit of that green poking through. So I'm taking a stenciling brush from the Dollar Tree, a little bit of white paint that I'm tapping off the excess, and I'm just going to stipple some of the white on it. And this made it look absolutely beautiful. I'm going to be painting this urn that you see here in the corner. You'll see it better in a second. I want to give it a concrete look. It's a really funky turquoise color, but it has some beautiful lines in it and design. So I'm taking some baking soda and I'm mixing it in with my newly made chalk paint. Now this turns out pretty thick because the chalk paint that I made is also very thick. So I do add a little bit of water just to thin it out so it's easier to work with. When I do this type of technique using the baking soda in the chalk paint, I like to use a stippling brush and this one is fairly rough. I love it for this because not only does the baking soda give it texture, but the stippling also gives it texture. I'm going to make sure I get in all of the grooves and all of these cracks and crevices and make sure that you don't see any of that green. Although at one point I thought it would be really cool to put some bronze paint on this and make it look like aged copper but that's not really my style so I'm headed back to the concrete. Now that the urn is dry I'm taking the same brush with some white chalk paint and I'm going to go all over it heavier in some spots lighter in other spots but it's all going to get a little touch of white. Now I'm going to start making the tree. This is a branch that I got from my lilac bush in the backyard and these stems I got at Walmart a while ago and they've been waiting for the right pot to come along and I finally was able to grab one. I'm taking my drill and with a bit that's a little bit bigger than the stems I'm putting some holes in the branch. I want to be able to set those stems right in the branch so they look like they're growing out. This one that I'm doing is on a bit of an angle and that will just help to make it look more realistic. I'm just going to use hot glue. I'm going to put some right inside each of the holes and then push the stem in and hold it there until the glue has a chance to dry. This turns out really good. I did this with a lemon tree a while ago for some summer decor and it's just a really fun way to make a fabulous looking tree. It may be hard for you to tell, but I'm making sure that I'm putting the branches in face up as you see me doing here. I don't want the colored parts to be looking down. I want the colored parts to be looking up because that's naturally how a tree would grow. I'm adding a few more holes down towards the bottom of the tree and then I'll just continue adding branches and stems until I'm happy with what it looks like. The other thing I do for these trees is keep spinning it around and making sure that it looks good from all angles because of course it's a tree. It's not going to be hanging on a wall. It's going to be standing up somewhere and it needs to look good from all angles. This urn wasn't very heavy. It's actually resin so it's kind of lightweight but I decided to put some pea gravel down at the bottom just to give it a little bit of extra weight so it doesn't topple over. I'm going to be using a pool noodle right in the center because it's got the perfect hole where I can put the tree trunk and then I'm going to be cutting up a little bit more pool noodle to wedge in all around the side and make sure that it's nice and secure in there. Then I simply pushed the stem right inside the pool noodle, added a little bit of hot glue and some reindeer moss to cover up the pool noodle. And this olive tree is complete and absolutely stunning.
I know topiary trees are all the rage and I thought I would try and make something a little more updated. I've seen a lot of them with hanging blossoms or hanging greenery to look more like a real tree instead of just the ball. So I thought I would give it a try. This is a medium sized styrofoam ball, probably about the size of a tennis ball. And I'm using Americana gel stain in the color Walnut and a really rough brush. And I'm just going to mimic some wood grain on this styrofoam ball. I just want it to be camouflaged underneath the greenery. The stick I'm holding it with is just a stick for now until I get everything figured out. I'm just going to remove the handles off of this galvanized pot and it does leave holes but I'm going to take care of that later. My idea for this pot was to make it look like it's terracotta so I'm using this honey brown paint. It looks a little brighter here but it's more of a brownish orange color and I'm going to just give this one coat all the way around. I grabbed this stick from my garden. Now I did pick a lot of these stems from an old maple tree that was getting cut down and I did this in the fall so I have a lot of these stems in my garage just waiting for projects like this. I'm going to go ahead and trim off all those little branches that I don't need. I have removed the flower stem from the styrofoam ball and I used a screwdriver to make the hole a little bit bigger and now I'm just pushing the wood stem into it and then hot gluing it to keep it secure. I'm going to start by using this vine. This came from Dollarama last year and every once in a while they do have some out but I really love this one because it's light and airy and really flowy and I think it'll be perfect for what I'm going for. I wasn't quite sure what kind of format I wanted the branches to hang but I did know that I wanted a long one in the front so that's what I'm doing here that'll be my first one with styrofoam you have to make sure that you hang on to the stem until the hot glue dries otherwise it just pulls right off I'm taking a piece of vine that has a wire in it and I'm going to bend it around in an arch I want some of the branches to kind of be hanging from the top down sort of like a willow branch anyway I think you'll get the idea once you see what I'm doing I'm going to go ahead and push that into the top of the ball and then just form it to make sure that it's hanging where I want it to be I'm going to add a few more of these rounded pieces so I can get the general shape and then I'm going to start filling it in Here's where I decided that I didn't really want that many of these little purple blossoms. So I just started to take them off of some of the stems. And then I even removed some of them from the stems that were already on the ball. When you're working with hot glue and styrofoam, you want to be very careful that you don't put too much hot glue because that will melt the styrofoam and then your piece will fall apart. So I always had to just hold the stem in place until the hot glue dried just to make sure that it was going to stay. And of course as always make sure you're using something to hold the hot glue and not your fingers so you don't get burned. For some of the stems that I wanted to hang at the bottom more and if they didn't have a wire in them I used a bamboo skewer to make a hole, added a little bit of hot glue and then pushed the stem right inside the hole and this seemed to work really well. I continued adding stems and pieces all the way around the ball, adding some filler pieces and trying to camouflage the brown of the ball as much as I could. I did want to see a little bit through, that's why I did it brown to begin with, but I wanted to make sure that it was mostly covered. Most topiaries don't have multiple types of greenery, but I thought it needed a little bit something special with it. So I've got this sort of I'm not even sure what this is. It's just some kind of greenery. It might be like a parsley or something like that. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and just remove some of the little stems and add those in as filler pieces. And if you take a look at that topiary right now, it's looking pretty scary. It kind of looks like a messy doll head with the hair just sticking out all over the place or maybe bedhead like me in the morning. Styling greenery is really a lot of personal preference. It's what you like to add to it. So what I'm doing is just taking some of these smaller stems now and filling them in. And I'm going to continue looking at the ball at from all angles and make sure that it's looking good and nice and full. 
here it is looking much better. It's a lot fuller. What I'm doing is just adding some of these little vine pieces where I still see a little bit of a gap from the styrofoam ball. So I'm just going to go ahead and place some of these shorter pieces in all throughout. And if you're looking really closely to this, you'll notice that all of those tiny little purple flowers have disappeared. I decided to remove them completely. I just wasn't liking the look of the purple with the green. So here are all those little purple blossoms. I decided to give them a spray paint with just some flat white paint. And I'm going to do the back and the front, just two coats, just a few of them. I don't want too much flowers on this topiary, but I thought a little bit of white might look pretty. Now I'm going to add the little blossoms back in. I've got about a dozen, I think, and I'm just going to add them from the midpoint down and just try and space them out evenly. To finish the pot, I'm going to go ahead and use a kitchen sponge with some antique white craft paint and I'm just going to sponge all the way around the pot and cover it up however I do want some of that orange to still peek through next I'm using a light gray color this is the Parisian gray from folk art and I have washed my sponge in between because I didn't want this to have any orange on it I wanted it to be just the pretty gray color and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to sponge around on it but I'm going to keep it a little bit lighter I do want some of that orange and some of that antique white to still peek through again it's turning out sort of concrete sort of terracotta sort of stone so I'm really not sure what to call it but I really love the effect and how it turned out in the end because you'll see a little bit of the inside of the pot I'm just using the rest of the gray paint that I had poured out and going down about two inches into the interior of the pot then I added just a little bit more of the orange on top in a few places just to bring out more of the terracotta color. I had this stencil left over from a decal that I cut out for a different project and when I cut out the decals I really try hard to keep the outside of it because it's a perfect stencil so I'm going to go ahead and stick this on and use the dark gray and just sponge it on. It turns out so pretty. I did the same thing on both sides. Now comes the fun part, trying to figure out how to get the topiary to stand nice and firm inside the pot. I'm using some hot glue and this is just some styrofoam that I had left over from a really large styrofoam ball. I just cut it up into a few pieces and I'm going to hot glue them all in. I used a screwdriver to poke a hole big enough in the styrofoam so I could push the stem down. I also secured it with some hot glue and then added some vase filler that I have hanging around to give it a nice firm hold so it won't tip over. Now I'm just going to fill in the remainder with some of this green moss. I usually don't like working with moss because it makes such a mess, but it just makes sense for a topiary. I'm going to use some hot glue and just put it down onto the styrofoam and then press the moss in place. I also decided to add a couple of rows of the Dollar Tree nautical rope. This is the thicker one that is a lighter white color. And I did miss the footage on this, so I do apologize, but I think it turned out sweet. My first DIY is a spring topiary. This is an extra large styrofoam ball that I'm just going to paint green so you don't see any of the white through the greenery. 
I'm using this wood garden fencing and I'm going to just snip some pieces apart using my wire cutters. I needed only about five for this project. I'm using a eucalyptus garland that came from a dollar store and what I'm doing now is just trimming off those little stems at the very bottom. I'm not going to need those because I'm going to actually use the bottom part of the leaf to glue onto the ball. Starting at the top, I'm gluing the stems facing downward until I get about halfway down the ball. I'm also using my screwdriver to help me not get burned because that plastic on the plants gets really hot. Here it is partway done. I'm going to continue to glue on the stems and this time I'm going to go in an upward motion. Here it is all complete. I've also added some little stems that are sticking out a little further just for some added texture. I'm using a screwdriver to punch out some of the styrofoam so I can make a hole big enough to hold the stem. I took a dowel and glued those five wood pieces to the dowel and now I'm just hot gluing it into place. And this is what you end up with. This is the container I'm going to use for the topiary and this was a thrifted item. I just love it. It was already painted white like this and it's metal. It has these beautiful cutout leaves. I thought it would be perfect. I'm taking some styrofoam and I'm going to glue it down to the bottom of this container, but I'm also going to need something to help that topiary tree stand up a little bit better. I'm using a spice jar and I've put some hot glue down at the bottom to hold the spice jar in place in between all of the styrofoam. Then I'm going to add a generous amount of hot glue inside the spice jar and place the topiary right inside. Hold it still until the glue has a chance to dry. Then I added some little bits of styrofoam. I pushed them down to the bottom using my screwdriver just again for added support for that stem. Once I had everything in place the way I needed it to be, I added some white rocks that were a Dollarama purchase. I think I got a big bucket of them for about $3. So I'm just going to put them in gently, making sure that none of them pop out the sides. And then I'm also going to add some green moss in between the rocks just to make it look like there's some grass or something growing up in between the rocks.